a stealth homestead moneymaker. Well, we are in Kansas and the clouds actually look a lot more uh, ominous here than they did in Oklahoma, which I think is really funny. Because isn't that how it goes? Is I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto. But this time we're definitely in Kansas. And it definitely looks stormy. And we've got some clouds that are reminiscent of, of like certain types of weather. So, um, hopefully we don't get any big storms. It was supposed to not come this far. But maybe they have because... The first rule is do not, do not let your body temperature go down. If you have shelter, get in the shelter. Don't go outside and get wet. Don't go outside and run around in circles playing and getting sweaty. If you know that you don't have power, if you know that you do not have um, heat consistent, it's one thing if you have a wood burning stove in here and you can get the fire going. It's another thing if you know that the only thing you have to keep you warm at night is an uninsulated Quonset and that we, you had an unseasonably cold uh, storm come in. So, in this one they do have power. They do have a pretty nice bed. And Let's see where they said they had a space heater that we could turn on. Okay, so cute touches are important in an Airbnb and in an off-grid cabin. So what they did is they put in some old barn wood on the walls. So it gives you a tiny bit of insulation. They have what looks like a, like a rough welded bed. It actually looks like they made that bed themselves. They have some shelves. They have very quaint things here. That is actually just a burn barrel with a pallet type wood on top of it. And they do have some wood here to burn if you wanted to use it in the fire pit. Okay, go ahead and put it on a chair somewhere, kiddo. Can I put it on that? Yep. And this makes it look like there's a window even though there's not. I mean, they, they really took some time to make it look cute. So they don't have very much into this place, the lighting, the power, uh, but for the most part, they really didn't put much into it. I am curious about walking around because they do advertise that there is no bathroom. So I'm gonna go walk around and see if I can find a safe place for us to go to the bathroom. And we will see how we do. Okay, let's plug the heat in. It's gonna be hard to take off our shoes in here because they're concrete. All right. <laughs> One of the best tools that I know of when you're living off grid is a good bathrobe. And the reason for that is that it's like a coat, but you can sleep in it and it's longer. So it's kind of like you're getting to wear a blanket. So I'm about to switch these girls out and put them into not only the clothes that they're wearing, but also a bathrobe, and that way they can take off their coats if they feel like it. Firewood here, some big pieces right there, and also some little pieces that are like small two by fours. But one thing I want you to just think of, 
is we have a wood stove and we also have a fire pit. If you're off grid, then you are using that for cooking and think of where your wind usually comes from because you don't have air conditioning in your house. You have to leave the windows open so that you allow the breeze to go through to cool your house off. If you have your fire pit right outside the main door and the wind is going from the wrong direction, then what happens is that all the smoke gets blown into your house, especially where that is a really, really big door. If the breeze is coming from any of those directions, anything except from that direction only, you're going to, if you have this open or you try and go, try to go in and out of it at all, all the smoke from that fire pit is going to end up directly in the house. And we foolishly, the first year that we were in our off-grid cabin, we put it right in front of the door because it looks so pretty. It looks so picturesque. And yet, if we had put it on the other side of the house, the side away from the coming wind, then we wouldn't have had a problem with it. It would not have looked as picturesque, but we could have used it. Well, it looks like we survived the night. I'm freezing because the blanket, my side of the blanket turned off in the middle of the night. The white one. That's the electric link. So, the important thing with off-grid living is keep things convenient, don't get chilled. I know that sounds really stupid, but if you're going to shower, shower in a warm room. If you're going to shower, use as little water as possible so that you're not hauling a lot of water. Um, simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. So for us in our off-grid cabin, we have one of those uh, pressure sprayers that we use and it takes about one gallon to shower all of us and it's just as thorough as if you were showering uh, with uh, conventional showering systems. The reason that you can do it so efficiently is that it's a handheld shower and you have to pump it so until you're ready to scrub yourself you don't turn the water on so the whole family can shower with one gallon of water we did really well here this morning make sure to wear socks until you absolutely can't wear socks make sure to wear shoes until you absolutely can't wear shoes because it keeps you warm don't let your feet get cold so we try to leave everything the way we found it. So we have made the bed. Usually they ask you to pull the sheets, but they didn't say anything about that. So we just made the bed and they asked that you sign the wall. Okay, once you have it signed, go ahead and go and get out. See if I can show you guys what they've done. So that's the outside. And there's the walls. Should we also Make sure I don't have anything else that got left. We're gonna turn off the lights. One more quick walk around. Check under the bed. I do really like this bed because if you are out in nature, you're gonna have mice and spiders that are gonna wanna be crawling up things. And if you have metal legs that are smooth like that and really high up off the ground, then you're not gonna have the same problem with mice and bugs. So, we have everything unplugged. It's a beautiful morning. In the summertime, I think this would be super fun, especially if they had it off somewhere else, not in front of the door. So there is your stealth homestead or farm moneymaker. Doesn't really advertise to what it is, but, um, I believe we paid uh, $57 a night for it and they do take fees out of your Airbnb for that but if you're making say $40 a night off of something like this 
you know that that's a pretty good return for an old Quonset or an old an old uh, shed out in the middle of your property so and it is gorgeous out here Let's see if I can show it to you you're also sharing the abundance and the beauty and the amazing place that you call home on to the next leg of the journey which will be Bellevue Colorado and it's only a four-hour drive which I'm grateful for and uh, there's some museums and stuff along the way so I'm pretty excited